So when people ask me what is NERI, I usually say one word, which is neuroenhancement. And the reaction is always, pardon? Is it techniques? Is it about disabled people? Is it about athletes? Is it about how to get a medication that can get you to be a bit more sharp and more smart and function better in your work or in the exams in the university? And all this is neuroenhancements. So I think that with this project, people can actually find out what it is all about. First of all, I don't think it's new. Humans have been enhancing the brain capacity for centuries and millennia. In the past it was through education, through some drugs like coffee and uh, some other things that supposedly made your brain a little more awake. At the moment what we're looking at are additional ways of enhancing brain capacities, whether it's genetic technologies or um, brain, machine interfaces, bionics and so on, or whether it's drugs. There are two dimensions to neuroenhancement which are somewhat blurred. One is therapeutic, that's uh, what we would do with people with Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, and the other is enhancement to uh, address those areas where normal people are either taking pharmaceuticals or using various devices to try and boost their memory boosts, their attention, uh, or um, just basically to stay awake and work. The thing is that what can be used as a therapy might be used in unhealthy subjects to increase, to augment your potential. Yeah, I think it's controversial because uh, many people sense that, well, we have been trying to improve ourselves or get rid of the hurdles and the inhibitions for many centuries already, but I think the uncanny idea is that perhaps now more than ever before we have unprecedented tools, unprecedented levels of access to our neurological functioning. I think uh, if you look at what people have been doing during the past few uh, centuries, I think there are well two questions we always tend to ask ourselves. Uh, well. How do I know myself, who am I, and how can I improve myself? And that's, I think, the basic drive behind human culture, this idea of dissatisfaction. Somehow we are dissatisfied with what we are. Maybe we can use some of these new tools to get rid of those inhibitions and hurdles, to become more creative, less inhibited, more productive, um, more really ourselves, perhaps. Or would it be artificial? Well, those are the questions we would like to address. And of course, this leads us to lots of ethical uh, thoughts. What uh, should be legal? What should be feasible? What should be supported by public funding? Would this be acceptable? And there's where we came in as an interface between science and society. We have a network of science centers. We are used to deal with schools, with associations, with the public at large. Can we help um, school children, you know, public in general, society in general, politicians and so on, think about what the uh, risks and opportunities exist in the area of neuroenhancement. We already have a society that is very divided. Will this make society even more divided? In many areas of technological innovation there are a variety of opportunities, there are a variety of directions of travel. And bringing society into science is a way really of informing the innovators of which of those potential pathways are likely to meet with public support or at least not likely to create a great deal of opposition. Lying behind there is the idea that there are some fundamental values and technological innovation needs to take account of these. Our role is to bring this debate, to help to bring this debate to the public.